Hi everyone, are you able to hear me? So sorry for all of these uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> nice way to wake up in the morning on the West Coast with um, technical issues, but thank you guys so much for your patience. I'm really sorry about that. Um, we'll go ahead and just jump right in so we make sure that we don't um, waste any time or and be very respectful of your time. So um, welcome to Bobsled Marketing's um, Primed and Ready. So Q4 Insights to help you as a brand have winning strategies for this holiday season. Um, we do have a lot to cover today, and especially since we did get kind of a late start, I'm just going to jump on in so we try and cover all of the material um, and ideally have some time left over for questions. So uh, really quickly, some fast introductions. I'll go ahead and start with myself. I am Brittany Startzel. I am the sales manager here at Bobsled Marketing. Um, and I've been in the Amazon space for about six years now, learning how marketplace nuances really affect brands. And my role within Bobsled is to be the first touch point for prospective clients and support partnership conversations to help brands achieve their goals. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to Oliveira and let her introduce herself as well. Thank you, Brit. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm with uh, Bobsled. Uh, I've been with Bobsled for two years as a spe sales specialist now, and my role is to respond to all questions you might have about Bobsled, our services, and how we can help you achieve your Amazon goals. Um, before this goal, I, uh, role, I worked as an account specialist, um, helping launch numbers of brands on various Amazon platforms, almost all of them, and marketplaces. Um, that was an amazing opportunity for me to gain an extensive Amazon knowledge and then understand better which strategy is the best for each stage of the Amazon plan. Now to you, Rachel. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rachel Street. I am currently a PPC manager and also um, a project manager. So I have a little bit of a role here at Bobsled. I've been at Bobsled for over a year now, um, but my history with Amazon started back in 2014. and. Really, ever since then, I've been almost exclusively focusing on the Amazon marketplace and uh, more so strategic marketing of, you know, what is the end of these marketing strategies um, on the marketplace? And really, the root of my passion is with uh, paid marketing, so PPC marketing on and off Amazon. So I'm excited to gear up for another Q4. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping items really quickly before we begin. Um, this webinar is meant to be interactive to just to ensure it's really as meaningful as possible for all of you. So if you have a question, uh, please feel free to add it to the chat box that you've been using. Um, and we'll get back to you either at the end of the presentation if we do have time for some questions or we'll shoot you an email after the fact just to make sure that we get you a response. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so we're happy to share it afterwards if you miss a point. Um, and finally, please let us know if there's an issue with audio or technical difficulties, like we all just went through together. So <laughs> if that happens again, um, please let us know and we will troubleshoot in the moment. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. Um, so today's agenda, uh, we'll be starting with account health and performance and how to maintain strong account metrics across the board. We'll share daily and weekly checklists that we actually use to monitor both Seller Central and Vendor Central. Um, we'll be looking at inventory, how to plan, when to plan, and what happens when you stock out. Uh, then we'll tackle some of the immediate opportunities to enhance your product catalog. And lastly, aside from paid advertising, uh, which promotion strategies make sense for your brand and your product? So on the next slide, um, we'll be looking at the iceberg. So if you're familiar with bobsled in any capacity, um, then this graphic may look familiar to you. Um, we often refer to it when explaining what goes into our service offering and support for brands that are actually looking to us to manage their Amazon account. Um, this image picks all that is going on underneath the surface, which really factors into the health of your account and the ability to be successful on Amazon. Uh, we'll be touching on each section of the iceberg today to really highlight all of the areas you need to focus on, especially in Q4, but all year round as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with a brief overview of operational needs. So what account metrics matter the most? And on the next slide, we'll look at uh, Seller Central, so specifically daily checks. 
Um, I won't spend a ton of time on these slides, especially just in honor of our time today, um, but we've included a handy checklist of items that you'll want to monitor daily and weekly in order to keep your account and listings in good standing. Um, as with most things on Amazon, your account cannot be set it and forget it. Um, in order to protect your account's key metrics and really stay in line with Amazon's KPIs, you'll want to create a system that allows for daily monitoring of everything that's listed here. Um, bottom line, don't let a performance notification take you down in Q4. And on the next slide, we'll look at weekly checks. Um, so we'll start with inventory management and FBA shipments. So doing a thorough weekly sweep of inventory is important in order to troubleshoot any issues or delays and to avoid a dreaded stockout. Secondly, stranded inventory. A common cause for stranded inventory is creating multiple offers for the same product. So if you close an existing offer, any inventory associated with that offer will become stranded, even if you create a new offer for the same product. So you want to reconcile this inventory as soon as possible and get the product selling again. Unfulfillable units. So these are the units that were either customer damaged, warehouse damaged, or defective in some way, and they need to be removed from the fulfillment center. So you can either remove or destroy unfulfillable inventory. And honestly, our recommendation is to go the removal order route, uh, just to avoid products from finding their way back onto the platform. Um, Amazon will allow you to set up an automated option to either return or destroy the products and the level of frequency. So next up is catalog review. Uh, check your product pages, make sure your bullets um, images and descriptions are showing properly. And finally, FBA fees. So it's not uncommon for settings and calculations to change on the platform. Um, so it's important, important to check the FBA fees are accurate at least once a week and file a, a, excuse me, file a support case if anything has changed despite no actual changes to the weight or the size of the SKU. On the next slide, we'll move to the vendor central side of things. So looking at um, daily checks first, and then the following side will be weekly. So for the daily checks, um, Amazon does handle a lot of aspects for you, such as sales, shipping, pricing, customer service, and returns, but there is still a lot to oversee in-house. Um, this list is highly recommended in order to preserve a healthy account. Um, in honor of time, again, I'm not going to read each bullet, but I'll just highlight a couple of quick extra tips related to this list that's right here. So uh, check vendor operational performance for any issues. You get access to a history of charges and totals for the duration of one calendar year. Chargebacks and vendor returns. Check for new chargebacks. These are the fees that will be deducted from your Amazon vendor payment due to not following compliance standards determined by Amazon. And finally, coupon recommendations. This is especially important if you're using Amazon Marketing Services or AMS, in which case coupon recommendations should be monitored and updated weekly, honestly, if not daily. So on the next slide, we'll be looking at Vendor Central weekly checks. So these metrics require consistent maintenance in order to ensure your, your operational performance is meeting Amazon's best practices. Again, in honor of time, um, I'm not gonna read through each bullet, but we do recommend ensuring these tasks become a really habitual routine in order to preserve a healthy account. And just as a quick note, uh, Bobsled Mar Marketing takes care of all of these checks that I just reviewed for our clients that work with us in a full channel management capacity. So if you're interested in seeing how we can support your brand um, to ensure a healthy account, please be sure to connect with me after the presentation. I'd be happy to talk you through it. So on the next slide, um, we'll look at some common issues to avoid in Q4. And uh, just a really quick plug for my awesome co-host, Rachel. Um, she actually wrote up a fantastic blog that covers this topic and is a really great supplement to this presentation. Um, so I, I recommend going to Bobsled's blog and um, reading that piece. And we do have some other Q4 related articles just to give you extra tools um, to tackle Q4 right. Um, so back to the show. Um, while there are the standard operational issues that will need continued oversight and maintenance, it's natural for unexpected issues to pop up when selling on Amazon. Um, in advance of Q4, it's highly recommended to conduct a brief risk analysis of your account 
and take note of any flags that either need to be addressed or kept on your radar for the holiday season. Um, so first up would be inventory issues. You know, any of these issues can cause the number of sellable units to decrease, especially during the holiday season. Shoppers are less likely to buy items from brands that don't have inventory in stock or make it appear that inventory isn't in stock in case they don't arrive in time to be given as gifts. Secondly, maintenance issues. So I'll touch on all of these. Um, the first being suppressed and deactivated listings. It's possible for listings to be made inactive by mistake. So keep a close eye on your catalog and catch unintentional deactivations. Second, payment failures. If payments aren't made, PPC ads will stop running. So we suggest ensuring your line of credit is stable and sufficient to address the increased advertising spend that is expected in Q4. Um, and compliance issues. Although compliance issues can cause problems really at any time of the year, they are particularly damaging in Q4 when case management solutions can take weeks to solve. Also, Amazon policy changes. So monthly storage fees typically go up in Q4. So brands might be tempted to remove inventory to avoid fees, but that can be a really dangerous strategy during Q4. Um, since you won't be able to restock that item for 30 days, you might end up selling out during honestly the busiest time of the year. Also customer service. So the quality of customer service that you will provide or that you should provide will really shape um, the view of your brand. So make sure to monitor your reviews closely, respond accordingly, and make sure it's in a timely fashion to show customers that you really care about their experience with your brand and products. Um, and last point to touch on is late shipments. So this very much relates to the FBM world. Uh, so if you're a vendor, you'll want to ensure that your POs are filled within the window of time expected by Amazon. It is critical that you meet those shipping deadlines. Um, failing to do so really does put your account at great risk. And we've seen instances where an entire account was suspended due to a high rate of late shipments. So on the next slide, we'll look at winning the buy box. Um, so although Amazon's A9 algorithm is proprietary, we do know that certain aspects affect the buy box ownership. So on the next slide, we'll look at three main factors. First is inventory management. Um, if you don't have inventory in stock, you're at risk of losing the buy box to another seller. Uh, second is pricing. If there are other sellers on the listing with a more competitive price or selling FBA or have healthy account metrics or all of those three, um, Amazon is going to favor that seller. And finally, unauthorized sellers. So if there's a number of resellers on your listing, you're essentially competing for the buy box with them. If their sales velocity is stronger, they have more reviews, or perhaps they're an FBA and you're an FBM, it's going to be really tough to win the buy box from them. And on the next slide, we'll look at product review management. So a key component of protecting your brand is consistently addressing customer reviews, especially those that are three stars or less. From, a, uh, from the performance metrics tracked by Amazon, it's really clear that product rank is impacted in multiple ways from the reviews left by customers, particularly by the review quality, so that would be the star rating, um, and the quantity, so the overall number of reviews. In addition, reviews can also provide helpful insight into a customer's unique experiences with the product, which can be used to apply productive updates to your description, your bullets, and your overall listing. So the next slide, we'll talk through inventory planning. Um, on the following slide, uh, we'll, we'll go through inventory forecasting because it is, it's really the most important piece of your Amazon operation. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, it's a perfect mix of art and science. So using the data available to you to help forecast demand and plan inventory accordingly is extremely important. But how do you do this? So start with last year's sales data. Take note of monthly sales volume, in addition to any month over month growth that you may have seen in Q4. And another great data point to consider is performance from Prime Day. So what sold really well? What didn't sell so great at all? If you were left with a stock out or an oversupply of inventory, be sure to factor those things into your Q4 inventory planning. And if nothing else, be prepared for a three to four times the average daily sales on those big days in Q4, like uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's also important to connect with your suppliers and understand lead times. 
and prepare accordingly to risk um, to reduce the risk of stockouts while inventory is being replenished. Make sure you've shared that lead time and any safety stock quantities with your in-house e-commerce or Amazon teams so that your reorder point is accurate when you're doing those recommended um, weekly account reviews. So on the next slide, we'll look at um, ordered unit sales. So the graph in front of you will give you an idea of what type of sales growth occurred in Q4 last year. So this is a compilation of data across nine different categories. And here we can see that there was nearly a 27% growth from October to November, a 28% growth from November to December, and a 62% growth from October to December. So leveraging sales data from past year's performance or that from Prime Day can really help give helpful clues on um, how to prepare accordingly this year. And on the next slide, we'll actually look at Prime Day as well. So um, as we just mentioned, you know, Prime Day is a really great performance indicator and can help forecast demand for the upcoming holiday season. So Prime Day 2019 uh, saw an impressive 71% increase in sales over 2018. And there were a few factors that did contribute to this growth, um, which included no major technical issues as we experienced in 2018. The sale lasted 12 hours longer and there was an estimated 10 million more Prime members compared to last year. So on the following slide, we'll talk through stockouts because they are so detrimental, they deserve their own slides. Um, stockouts don't just result in a decrease or a loss of sales during the stockout period, but a loss of future sales, even when inventory is being restocked. So during a stockout, you've lost the ability to acquire new customers, forcing them to look elsewhere for a product in stock. Amazon will conveniently present other similar items for the customer since their focus is and always will be on the customer. If that competitor succeeds in winning that customer's loyalty, you've not just lost a sale, but you've lost a loyal customer. This is even more costly for FBA because there's so much more to lose when you run out of FBA inventory. We know that FBA inventory has a positive effect on sales rank, more so than FBM inventory. So the potential loss in rank and placement within organic search is higher with a greater comeback required. And stockouts prevent sponsored product ads from running, which can take a good couple of weeks to start back up again and gain traction. So moving to the next slide, we'll um, share a couple more be warned notes on stockouts before switching gears a little bit. Um, so Amazon sees your customer as their customer. So this image shows the reality of what can happen if you run out of stock while, you, while your competitors have plenty to share. Amazon will naturally recommend similar items and you will lose the sale, as we discussed, potentially a long-term customer as well. So while you may want to avoid overstocking and potentially having to pay those long-term storage fees down the road, it's still preferable to running out of inventory during the rush of the holiday boom. You can always pull out extra inventory as January ends. So the bottom line here is uh, missing sales due to a lack of inventory planning during the holidays is throwing away a truly massive opportunity. So in the next slide, we'll look at um, some projected key dates. So Amazon hasn't released their key dates for Q4 2019 yet. Um, however, guidelines from last year will likely align pretty closely to what will come into play this year. So. Uh, looking at last year, Amazon required inventory to be in for Black Friday and Cyber Monday by November 5th, which was just shy of three weeks out from Thanksgiving. So if we follow that same methodology with Thanksgiving a week later this year, we would estimate allowing for about a three week or allowing for three weeks to ship inventory in for FBA to align with an estimated deadline of November 11th as the cutoff date for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Luckily, Christmas is on the same day every year, so that does help a little more with planning. Um, but following last year's dates, we would allow for roughly a month lead time so that inventory needs to be received no later than December 1st. Um, and inventory for 2020, it shouldn't be sent in any earlier than December 17th. Uh, we really recommend the focus to be on moving product for 2019 first. Um, just a couple of quick important no notes to share as well. Um, shipment processing takes longer and longer leading up to December. So this is why it's really important to understand the lead times from your supplier or your warehouse or your logistics provider. 
Um, also, be aware that Amazon has put restrictions on new FBA sellers coming onto the platform during Q4. Uh, fulfillment space is limited, and depending on the category, this could be something to watch for if you're a new seller trying to get a start in Q4. And you can't forget about New Year's. While sales do decline slightly in January, don't forget that sales are still coming in. Think gift cards. Um, so stocking out in January still isn't ideal. <laughs> Uh, so with all of that being said, um, Bobsled Marketing is offering a Q4 readiness audit to help brands ensure um, that they're primed and ready for the holiday. So if you're interested in hearing more about the support we can provide to help with Q4 prep, um, please feel free to send me an email after the presentation and I would be more than happy to connect with you. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pass the mic to Oliveira so she can take us through the second part of the presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, Britt. That was very informative. So uh, let's see um, how to maximize your product assortment. Let's start with best sellers. So when evaluating how to enhance your catalog, take a closer look at your prime day performance. Not just those that sold well, but how did they sell? Take a look and see which promotions worked for which products and let that inform your promotion strategy in Q4. Also, uh, seeing what sold really well without a promotion might make you consider running a promotion to boost sales even further. For your best sellers, read the recent product reviews and see what people are saying. So what did, uh, what did they like? What did they dislike? Are there any product changes you can make now to mitigate any further criticism? These are some of the questions that should be considered. Let's now move to bundles, bundles and multipacks. So some more questions you, you should have in mind are which products are frequently bought in multiples and which products are frequently combined. To check this, you can download all orders report and see which products uh, are bought in multiplex and in combination. Here are some of the examples of bundles and of uh, multipacks. The great added benefit of the bundle and multipack is an increase in your overall order value. And bundles can be easily marketed as a gift set, so ideal for any holiday shopper. Let's move to after sale experience. So as you all know, the sale doesn't end after the customer has made the purchase. You'll want to connect with them after the sale as well. So make sure your post-purchase email sequence re reflects your current catalog and season and doesn't contain any outdated information. Now is the time to consider optimizing your post-purchase emails to really add value to the customer experience. Adding PDF guides, how-to documents, did you know marketing material, they all help the customer to get the most out of your product and connect with your brand. Okay, let's see. Uh, which promotions you should consider. So shoppers are looking for deals. Running promotions is a great way to drive sales of new products, attract new customers who are still on the fence and boost visibility. On both platforms, you can take advantage of lightning deals and promotions, such as amount or percentage of, buy one, get one, free shipping, coupons, etc. So let's talk about promotions planning. If you didn't take advantage of Prime Day or haven't explored all of the promotions Amazon has to offer, now is the time to develop your promotion strategy for the quarter. It's best to plan and prepare rather than react. Decide now which product you'd like to promote, consider your margins and how much you're prepared, prepared to discount. Having this information to hand will help in making quick decisions for time-sensitive promotions such as lightning deals. Again, going back to your product assortment, use the all orders report to understand consumer buy, buying behavior and tailor promotions accordingly. And remember, people need to know about your promotions, so consider promoting them off-platform as well by leveraging your social media base um, and subscriber base and share all the details of the deals. Lastly, promotions are most effective when you, uh, your offer wins the buy box. Otherwise, the promotional messaging cannot appear on the detail page. So it's crucial to evaluate your buy box statistics and take actionable steps to winning it 100% of the time for your promotions to be seen. Let's take a look at some Prime Day data. So taking a step back and looking at how your promotions, if you run any, performed over Prime Day can be a helpful guide when thinking about promotions for Q4. So this table shows the impact on promotions on sales. Clients A, B, and C run promotions on their entire catalog. D and D only on a couple of products and uh, F and G didn't participate in promotions at all. So if anything else, this table shows us that even with zero promotion activity, an increase in sales is to be expected. So going back and thinking about the importance of inventory planning is reinforced here. But what my point here is, um, is that limited and full promotions can have an overwhelmingly positive effect on revenue. 
Granted, your margins are slimmer on promotional sales, but if your margins can support them, the knock-on effect of, on your catalog and brand on Amazon can be quite widespread. Okay, so let's jump into the promotions with deals. You can create two deal variations, lightning deal and seven-day deal. The first deal you can take advantage of is lightning deal, which is a time-bound promotional offer to have your product featured for several hours, approximately four to 12, on the Amazon deals page. Uh, that is one of the most visited pages on Amazon. On the other hand, seven-day um, deal runs for seven consecutive days. And the fee for seven-day deal is usually higher, although um, these fees vary according to the time of the year. In South Central, um, you have to be recommended for deals, and the criteria to be eligible are that your products must have a minimum of three stars, so approximately 3.5. You must be prime, and Amazon will specify the percentage of variation that must be included in the deal. That's usually about 60%. On the other hand, in Vendor Central, brands can create lightning deals without recommendations from Amazon. Um, the trickiest part of deals is catching the window. So the recommendations change every week as do the requirements. So um, if you see a recommendation you'd like to submit and you have enough inventory stock, submit it right away. One caution with lightning deals is, while well, you're provided with a schedule, you won't know exactly when the deal will run until one week before the deal. If at any time you'd like to cancel the deal, you can still do so with no penalties. This is really the main drawback of Lightning deals. So if your deal runs during peak shopping hours, it can be very successful. But if it runs during the quieter shopping period, performance can be underwhelming. Uh, let's see a screenshot of a product page with Lightning deal that's, that's running. So in the example here, you'll see uh, the, the Lightning deal shows the deal price and percentage discount, percentage of claimed units and the countdown to when the deal ends, with the option to add a car to cart immediately without needing to click through to the listing page. Okay, let's see uh, a sales price. So the right sales price can help you win the buy box. Um, you should consider implementing a limited time sale price if you're competing against uh, offers by other sellers. Um, this is an example of a straight, um, straight sale price where the original price, sale price and percentage savings are displayed on the product listing. So um, this is still an option uh, that's available in listing loader template for uploading new products. There is an optional field in that template titled sale price where it is indicated that the site will strike through the item's normal price and indicate that the item is on sale at this price. But I will show that this has been an issue for about a year now uh, where not all on sale items show the strike through price. This was as a result of a complaint by Consumer Watchdog last year, which suggested that Amazon was checking reference prices up to 70% of their historical price value on multiple items on the site, also known as dynamic pricing or search pricing. The FTC is now looking into faulty practices around search pricing and the effects uh, of which will come down to sellers on the platform. Let's move the percentage off. So you can use advanced options uh, to set up a promotion with a tier discount structure to encourage the customers to buy more because they get a better discount. These will show under the special offer and product promotion sections on the product page. And um, they will also have add to cart button uh, if, you're, uh, if you're winning the buy box for, for that product. Okay, let's talk about social media promo code. So in order to make um, the most of the social media promo code, make sure to share a landing page URL on social media or marketing channels such as paid research to direct customers and promote sales to your products. The promotions can start four hours after they are created and can run up to 30 days. The discount must be at least 15% and maximum of 99% of the current price. As a best practice, you should communicate um, limited time only or while supplies last to notify your customers that the deal may sell out. Now coupons, which are my favorite promotions on this platform. So this discount is very similar to retail where um, the customer clips a coupon of amount or percentage of value and adds it to their My Clipped Coupons page for redemption immediately or at a later date. You can see the coupon landing page on the left. Uh, coupons are a great promotional tool to drive sales and increase traffic and brand awareness. Um, they give a, a much, a much higher redemption rate than other promotions, and the simple act of clicking to, uh, to clip a coupon is very appealing to customers. Coupons get a lot of visibility. They are displayed in multiple places around Amazon, in search results, uh, on the listing page, in emails, soap.com, and on the Amazon coupons page. 
Some of the challenges you might face with um, coupons are ensuring you set a high enough budget to maximize the number of coupons clipped and pay attention to the time frame. Both of these can be amended even when the coupon is live, but you'll need to make sure to check it regularly so it doesn't expire. And also there is a small redemption fee per coupon that should be considered when setting up a budget. Lastly, subscribe and save uh, allows Amazon customers to sign up for recurring scheduled deliveries of products they use frequently. Subscribers receive a discount of 5, 10, 15, or even 20% uh, off their uh, subscribe and save orders, as well as free shipping. So all eligible FBA sellers can participate in subscribe and save by enrolling their FBA products in the program. This program is ideal for replenishable products such as coffee, tea, toilet paper, uh, hand soap, etc. Let's talk about product giveaways. They're real fun. So you can gain exceptional placement on Amazon giveaway page and extend the offer with a percentage of coupon for every non-winner entry to increase the consumer's incentive to purchase. The giveaway simply costs the price of the products that are being given away. You can generate even more buzz and traffic by sharing with influencers and social media posts on story. Benefits of a product giveaway are that it'll grow your customers list, increase their loyalty, promote your product, drive sales, and best of all, create a fun and memorable experience. Okay, on the next slide, you'll see Amazon live stream page. So Amazon live stream is a fantastic opportunity to interact directly with customers real time and share and increase your brand power on Amazon. Think of it as Amazon's own, own version of QVC. You can do an informative video, um, a how-to, a fun video of the product you use, a quick video sharing your brand story, all while featuring top selling or brand new products. Having special deals offered on product is recommended. In order to participate, you have to be a professional seller on Amazon, and you'll need to download Amazon Live Creator app that's completely free. Benefits of um, the Amazon Live stream are that it'll grow your brand presence, you'll get to engage with your customers, and it will consecutively increase your sales. Okay, and now to wrap up, let's see what's known as the halo effect. So this is one of the interesting aspects of promotions. This is the increase in customer discovery and sales both during and after the promotion has run. What this means is even if your promotion performs worse than expected during the promo time frame, you could still see a noticeable spike in sales after the promotion has expired. Here's an example of one account that performed particularly well after Prime Day. As you can see from the sales data here, product sales uh, were up 20% the first week uh, following Prime Day and 50% up from two weeks after versus two weeks prior. So it's important to recognize the immediate and residual effects promotions can have. Okay, let's see how the famous A9 algorithm works. So Amazon's A9 algorithm chooses products for their heavily weighted factors, which are text match relevance, product availability, in other words, inventory planning, price, and sales velocity as the number one ranking factor. So how to show up as, uh, to show up as number one? Get more sales. As we all know, Amazon is obsessed with the user experience and they go by happy users, buy products. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the indirect factors. So if you want to improve your uh, sales, you can do it by leveraging these indirect factors such as fulfillment method, reviews, uh, high quality images, enhanced brand and A plus content, advertising and promotions. All these factors play together, driving visibility and sales on Amazon. You should think of a long uh, long term strategy here. So you should work on the SEO. Uh, SEO is a text match relevancy factor, and we are going to talk about keywords and prepping your SEO for Q4. I'll pass the mic to my lovely colleague Rachel, who will walk you through the, the keywords. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I do apologize. We're coming up on um, time is a little more limited due to some technical difficulties. So I'll certainly try to get through this the best that I can. Uh, but if for some reason we go over on time, I really do apologize. There's just a lot of great content. So moving into what keywords am I being indexed for? This is really a common question that I feel like almost every client or any brand that I interact with um, is curious about. And over the last few months, it's really become an active strategy to be monitoring. So a quick and dirty trick is really just to type in the ASIN followed by a keyword. You're gonna see um, results if it is being indexed um, and no, resu no results if it's not being indexed. So it's pretty straightforward, but being um, in Q4, we totally understand that scalability is important, which is why um, there's tools for this management, which include obviously um, Bobsled does this for 
um, our clients and one, a fantastic tool that we utilize and one of my favorite tools is going to be Helium 10, um, which you can utilize for that management as well. So while on the topic of indexing, obviously indexing all comes down to your content and the keywords that are being featured within your content. Um, so how do you leverage your titles, bullet points, and descriptions? Obviously, um, inserting those keywords into that content, but it certainly has to be a careful approach. It's obviously art and science, right? So um, inserting keywords into your titles, bullets, and descriptions is going to be very important um, for how and when you um, populate on the search results, but it has to be consumer friendly. Um, again, uh, Amazon cares first and foremost about the consumer. So if your content is not appealing um, to the consumer, your conversion rates are gonna go down, uh, which is gonna have the complete opposite uh, effect that you want on your product visibility. Another um, kind of, not trick, but analysis that is really, really important to be doing actively and certainly frequently during Q4 is um, doing a share of voice analysis. Um, and it's oftentimes an overlooked metric, but I think it's something that's uh, pretty imperative for you to know all your competitors. So what this is, is it um, kind of just demonstrates the market share of the first page search results, um, whether you're typing in your brand name or a really common search term. Um, it's gonna let you know the percentage that you occupy for those first page of search results as far as um, your sponsored placements, and then also your organic placements, and you can also combine um, the two as well. Um, and what this does is it obviously gives you the insight you need to know, um, you know, what competitors are targeting your brand, what percentages should you have, do you want to aim for, and um, you know, what keywords is there opportunity to target more frequently, and what um, competitors do you need to set up some defensive uh, campaigns and strategies against. And uh, just a side note, this is a, a tool called Adjustico, and I believe it's still in beta, but um, this is something that we offer our clients internally and something that I found to be extremely helpful. So moving on, um, now that we've kind of covered the basics of indexing and keywords, obviously, fundamentally, we want to be covering um, getting your products listings ready for Q4 um, as well, because obviously that directly impacts your visibility on Amazon. So kicking it off with product titles, we know that product titles weigh heavily into the visibility and product placement on Amazon search results. Um, and something that we kind of anticipate or really speculate, I guess, um, for me personally, is that the first half of the title is going to be the most heavily indexed. Um, we know this because oftentimes the title can be collapsed um, when you're browsing on mobile or even more so in search results if you're just browsing on your desktop. So that demonstrates that need to have conversion driving content really early on. Um, so really some steps here that we've outlined is um, first and foremost, making sure that you're, you've refreshed your keywords, um, doing a keyword analysis uh, to help keep uh, your content um, relevant and conversion driving. Next is formulating your titles based on the proper syntax and um, uh, kind of title structure, which will include your brand, your product, uh, some product attributes, unique selling points, and um, usually typically all by keyword string. Um, and again, it has to be consumer friendly, um, no word stuffing, uh, and keywords are only indexed once within the title, so there's no need to have um, them repeating. And lastly is just making sure that um, you're compliant. This is really something that I've noticed even within the last 60 days, Amazon is super, is starting to become super stringent with. So um, ensure the titles are compliant. Um, they'll get deactivated, uh, you know, or suppressed because of that. And um, like Brittany mentioned earlier, this is really detrimental during Q4 because of the fact that um, you have, you're able to make up potentially a week's worth of sales within one day. And we know that Amazon case management is going to be flooded with the millions of cases. So this is really not the time to blur any sort of lines when it comes to your, your title. And going back to Amazon increasing things more recently, what I was referring to is in July, Amazon uh, started suppressing ASINs in search results that did not comply with the character limit. So each category now has a character limit. Um, so you'll want to be checking to see what your character limit is, but in general, 
titles should be under 200 characters. They shouldn't contain any promotional phrase, phrases such as free shipping, um, the best and brightest, 100% uh, uh, quality or satisfaction guaranteed, and then no special characters, of course. So moving on um, to an example of the title, and I included this title for a lot of reasons. This is a great listing, but uh, ironically, I've met a ton of people who buy iRobots or these uh, type of robotic vacuums during uh, the holidays, uh, including myself. But um, as you can see here, we have the brand, the product, a unique selling point, which is it's why it connects to the Wi-Fi, works with Alexa, um, good for pet hair. So all of the type of um, information you want to be including without it being overwhelming and not customer friendly. Moving on to listing images. Uh, so when it comes to listing images, imagery is really the visual currency of a product listing. Um, customers are looking to get the most information out of these images as possible. And I think that's why we've seen really fantastic results over the last few months with um, adding more infographic images and uh, images that fe feature text explanations. And that's because they want to be able to get as much information out of this listing as they're scrolling through those product images, especially on mobile. I'm a prime shopper. I know I shop that way. So something to keep in mind. Obviously, mandatory, you want to utilize all of the available imagery, um, three to four high resolution product images, two to three lifestyle images, products and use shots, and then um, optional, again, in working to have some sort of infographic or even, um, you know, I've seen some great uh, slides put together, or, excuse me, images put together of how to's of the image, um, things like that. And uh, if you have the creative available, always add a video. Video helps increase the trust within your customer and cultivate your brand. And obviously that's gonna help increase conversion rates at the end of the day. Moving on to listing bullet points. Um, bullet points, uh, for some reason I just have, all content should be optimized obviously, but I really do think there's so much strategy and excitement around bullet points. It's a great opportunity to cultivate your brand narrative. When it comes to updating your bullet points, you want to have that conversion driving um, content. So doing your, again, your keyword analysis. And then also if you're not using your customer review feedback um, to help drive your content or create your content, you'll certainly want to do that in Q4. This is an area where you can look for commonalities to decide what wins your customer, what draws them back, and then also how, um, you guys uh, uh, compare to the, what the competitor is offering. So that's, again, your unique unique selling point. Uh, as far as space goes, again, because bullet points can be collapsed, we uh, recommend that the top three bullet points essentially must have to be able to convince the customer to, to purchase your product and making sure it's consumer friendly. So avoid word stuffing. Uh, moving on to product descriptions and enhanced brand content or A plus content. And as most of you probably saw in Seller Central, it's, it's really just more so becoming termed as A plus content, which is fantastic. Uh, with A plus content, you have a fantastic opportunity to leverage the template, um, to include high quality imagery, um, add a, a, a blurb about your brand or something that's unique about your brand. Maybe it's a charitable aspect. Um, adding a Q&A, adding an infographic video. These are all great things for your enhanced brand content. Um, if you're not utilizing um, A plus content, then your product description, this is another area where you can format it pretty creatively to do a Q&A or um, you know, just add as much detail in a consumer friendly way. Uh, another note I wanna note here is that uh, even if you have A plus um, implemented, your product description probably is not going to be visible, but you still want to be updating that on the back end because those search, those keywords are being indexed. So other listing considerations as you enter into Q4 is um, making sure that your back end keywords are optimized correctly and compliant. Um, you only need to, you know, include a, a search term. You don't need to duplicate uh, terms within uh, those back end search terms and certainly do not want to test the waters by adding any um, competitive brand names in there. Next is making sure your product price point is competitive. Um, and, you know, if you have a map policy, make sure your retailers are familiar with it. And on that same note, uh, making sure that if you have uh, authorized sellers that they're aware of your pricing um, during holiday, especially if you're working with multiple 
market. So say you have products on Target and Walgreens.com and a direct site. So um, what will happen is if that price is not the same or the lowest on Amazon, then your buy box will be collapsed, which means your listings won't be populating in search results and it's really not consumer friendly. So it will usually tank sales. And when it comes to buy box, obviously we know that if another seller's in the listing price lower, you won't have the buy box. So I think we've, we've touched on it pretty well of if you don't have the buy box, nothing is going to work out for you. Your PPC marketing, your residual results from your promotional uh, efforts and even your inventory flow. And uh, another one, be compliant, 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 compliant. And uh, lastly, making sure your products are organized correctly. This is going to make ensure that your products have consistent sales and the customer is getting a great view of your product catalog. So now that we've talked about listing uh, content, let's move into a very important piece, which is your paid advertising during Q4. So here are just some sales numbers that we saw from last year during Q4 collectively from uh, some of the brands that we manage here at Bobsled Marketing. Um, and the trend is pretty consistent. I've, you know, I've been doing this, um, you know, for over five years now and the percentage increase, I always tell people expect at minimum a 30% budget increase in PPC during November and December. Uh, but here in the data, it shows that clicks increased by 27% in November compared to October and 3% in December compared to November. Looking at ad spend, um, that increased 34% in November compared to October and 15% to de December compared to November. And then cost per click, 4% increased in November and uh, it actually decreased by 2.8% in December. So something to keep in mind when you're planning your budgets. Uh, but what I really wanna get out of this slide and communicate is that you guys should know your data look at your historical data. You should know when your peak sales days are, um, you know, be planning your advertising budgets to be supportive during these peak times and really promotions in general on that note. A good insight into Q4 is going to be Prime Day. So obviously during Prime Day, it was really important to analyze your strong performing campaigns, analyze your customer feedback, optimize your product detail pages, and update your backend search term. And uh, this is what's called being retail ready. Um, Amazon doesn't want to populate ads that won't sell. So um, that's how we're going to make sure that they're optimized as well as possible when they enter into those auctions. Um, and another note here is having the evergreen approach. I see this time and time again where ads are launched um, too closely to the big sales day, and they don't have any chance to get off the ground. And the way that Amazon populates ads, again, it's the likelihood, the most likely to lead to a conversion. So if you don't have any historical data, it's going to cost you more to get up the speed. Um, and again, you're not going to see those metrics that you would want. Moving on, um, looking at the sales data here, impressions and clicks, it's very clear that the volume significantly increases, which is what absolutely will happen during Q4. Um, so it's important that you consider this and implement bid structures that support those extra clicks sustainably without missing the opportunity to acquire these, uh, the traffic. And so when it comes to strategies, typically, um, you know, we'll work with uh, getting strategies and bid structures and optimization plans implemented by November 1st um, as a, a date for you guys. And then when it comes to sales, obviously sales are gonna um, increase significantly. Um, and the window for Q4 is gonna look very similar. And the thing I wanna stress here is that you can't make sales without budget. Um, so it's important that your budgets are being utilized uh, correctly and absorbed correctly. And a rule of thumb is, you know, if you have a budget, I would open that budget if the ROI is there. Continue to open that budget if you're gonna make you know, 10x the return you're going to make in January. So just be smart about your decisions and how you're allocating your budget and know that this is really a glimpse in time. So what did Prime Day teach us? Um, uh, advertising to reach Prime Day shoppers. Uh, we converted a very high rate. Um, preparing your campaigns for additional traffic, being competitive with your bids, and taking advantage of the increase in traffic. Uh, when it comes to Q4, Absolutely, you want to be utilizing all the ad types, testing ad copy, and implementing bid and keyword um, optimization strategies that are going to lead to the highest ROI and largest sales. Um, searchers during holiday season are closer to the point of purchase, obviously, um, and therefore it's important to focus on 
you know, ways to capitalize on that. And to do so, um, just some tips here is utilizing multiple ad types to occupy more landscape. This will increase the opportunity of getting ads in front of qualified traffic. Another good piece here is utilizing ASIN and category targeting. Targeting ASINs where the, there's a, a gap in the market, I guess you could say, targeting ASINs where you have a competitive advantage or that you're wanting to get exposure or cross exposure for. Utilizing bids by placement, implementing bid structures that are competitive again and smart. Um, you don't want to tank the metrics by not bidding enough or bidding too aggressively. Uh, ensure that you're doing your keyword mining and your search term optimization very frequently. This is the absolute worst time to set and forget your campaigns. You should be in there multiple times a day during Q4. Um, and then uh, lastly, testing your ad copy uh, you know, based on the information you have about your consumers. And on that note, I just wanna mention Amazon Brand Analytics, which is available in Seller Central. Um, this is a fantastic area to get insight on your customers. It's gonna tell you what customers are comparing your products to when they're purchasing, um, what uh, your conversion share is, and um, you know, with this information, it also has demographic uh, uh, information as well, so you can cater your content to that. That's something that's been an age-old part of marketing. And then you know, looking into basket building campaigns as well with sponsored products. Uh, another part of the strategic sales funnel is bringing off Amazon traffic to uh, to Amazon, so utilizing social media, traditional search search marketing platforms as well. And then um, touching on sponsored brands one more time, um, I just want to mention how important it is. This is a really competitive placement, and it's going to be, I'm not saying this is the only placement that's going to perform well during Q4. I think all placements strategically have the opportunity to be optimized really well, but this does account for up to 30% of conversion shares on that first page of search results. So it's important um, that you're being mindful of that and feature your top selling products that have the best bet in um, being as identified as relevant as possible. So to summarize, absolute three steps um, that you should be uh, taking in co into consideration um, when it comes to Q4 is monitoring your budgets, planning and optimizing your bids accordingly, and then being creative with your ad targets, your ad placements, um, all of that. Uh, just be creative and open-minded um, you know, to your approach to sponsored products and any paid placement on Amazon. So uh, lastly here, uh, we'll touch on real quick how to optimize your Amazon storefront since it is the season to be jolly. And uh, here's some tips to get your storefront in the holiday spirit. Uh, first is your product selection. If you are the type of brand that has holiday giftable items, absolutely showcase those. Um, if you, um, you know, as far as your brand page structure goes, you want to make sure that the navigation meets the customer's journey. Um, this is also another way that you can help refine uh, the way that you bring traffic to the storefront. So building out the navigation to include a gift guide, bestsellers, new releases, and even promotions. Updating your template with um, creatives and the format is really important. Again, it has to match the customer journey. Um, so getting a refresh, um, refreshing everything is a, a good start uh, come November. If you have the video creative, again, videos just help drive conversion. So um, we ab absolutely recommend adding videos um, to your storefront. And then lastly, driving traffic to your storefront as well. Um, utilizing uh, off Amazon traffic. And this is really great because it helps create a brand experience um, in bringing people, uh, bringing your own volume to Amazon that is already qualified and relevant. Um, and you're able to create tags and through those tags, you're able to track some analytics. And the analytics are available at the aggregate level as far as like page. You can't necessarily see, necessarily see the exact ASIN, but this is tremendously valuable information that you want to have historically saved. This tells you a lot about your customers. Um, you can take this information and kind of uh, adjust your strategies for the next big holiday. So uh, a fantastic opportunity to be getting to know your customers here. Okay, so um, we've reached the end of the presentation. Uh, I want to thank you all so, so much for taking the time to join us today. We do apologize for the technical difficulties. And I, I do realize that it's um, we're a little over time here. Uh, but if you have any final questions 
uh, thoughts, concerns, or feedback, please feel free to comment them. Um, we'll be working to send out this uh, recording of this webinar, and we'll include the answers to your questions. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for being here.